What's up guys, this is Matthew Burns, and welcome to your first tutorial in a series on how to communicate between a microcontroller and an SD card. Um, we're going to be communicating between these two devices using a protocol known as uh, Serial Peripheral Interface Protocol. This uh, data transfer protocol is essentially two shift registers, one in each device, and a clock that sends a pulse to each of them. Each time the clock pulse goes high, one bit is shifted from the shift register in one of the devices to the other, and then a bit leaves the shift register on the other end in the other device, and it goes back to the first device. Um, the, the basics on how, how we're going to use this to communicate with the SD card uh, is that we're going to be sending commands to the SD card. And the commands that we're going to be sending are six bytes long. So we have to send six bytes through the shift register to send a command to the SD card. Every command that we send to the SD card is going to be followed by a response, whether it be a, a one-byte response or a three-byte response. or there are, there are many different R1, R, R1B. There are many different types of responses. Um, we'll go into the details of that later. But basically, what you have to know for now is that we're going to be communicating through a protocol that's going to require four lines. Uh, three, actually, because chip select is going to be tied to ground. More on that later. I'll include a diagram of this circuit here. Um, this, we're going to be dealing with a master out slave inline, a master in slave out, and a clock. Uh, this microcontroller that I'm using here is the PIC16F887. Um, I will actually, no, I have a, I have a pin out of it here that I can show you. Uh, the reason why I'm using this microcontroller is because it has a, it has serial peripheral interface hardware, which can make this a lot easier to implement. I won't have to, have to bit bang the serial peripheral interface. I can just use the hardware built into the microcontroller. Um, as I mentioned, the, the master out, slave in, master in, slave out are these two here. There's the serial data out, serial data in. Uh, and then the serial clock is right there. Those are the three pins we're going to be using to, uh, to implement the serial peripheral interface and, and SD card. The SD card pinout is fairly simple. Um, the, the pinouts that we're going to use, the, uh, the, the pin designations, whatever the pins do that we're going to be using. So this right hand column here for serial peripheral interface. Uh, as you can see the pins are numbered on the card to the left. There is uh, chip select right there which I said we're going to just tie to ground. We're not going to use that. Uh, data in is connected to, so pin 2 on the SD card is data in and that's going to be connected to serial data out on the microcontroller, pin 24. Uh, VSS1, it's just going to go to ground, VDD is going to go to power. Uh, by the way, an important note, I fried an SD card by... Uh, I, I program my microcontrollers at 5 volts, and then I test them using uh, a power supply, and I run them at 3.3 volts, but I was careless. I left, them, uh, I left the SD card connected to the circuit when I was programming it, and I fried the SD card, keeping it plugged in to the socket while it was uh, powered at 5 volts. So you want to uh, uh, just run the entire thing at 3.3 volts. The microcontrollers, uh, this microcontroller is a wide operating voltage range. 3.3 volts is fine for it, and that's what the SD card is specified for. I believe it's 2.7 to 3.6 is the SD card range, but uh, I just I go with 3.3. Uh, the serial clock is is right here. It's pin 5 on the SD card. That is going to connect to pin 18 on the microcontroller, serial clock. Um, there is also uh, VSS2 that's going to go to ground. Data out on the SD card is going to connect to serial data input, which is pin 23 on the microcontroller. And for serial peripheral interface protocol, pins 8 and 9 on the SD card are not going to be implemented. So I just have them connected to power via two 50 kilo ohm resistors. So I, w I will include a schematic later. It, I know it's difficult to, to discern what's connected to what here uh, just through this video, but um, I will post a schematic, so that won't be a problem. 
Um, I guess, uh, I, I should, before I go through the code of this, because, uh, if you're watching this video, you probably haven't seen the schematic yet, I should go over the basics of this. So, it's based around a PSE 16F 887 microcontroller. Those LEDs, I have eight of them connected to port B. They are not terribly important to this circuit. I just use them so I can send bytes to that port just uh, as as basically signals, like the, the assembly code got to this line, the code made it here, so this worked properly. So I just use it because I can't see what's what's happening inside the microcontroller, I just use it as, as an indicator. Uh, those black wires you see sticking out uh, are so I can connect my microcontroller to my Picket 3 programmer. Uh, I used to have, uh, I, I guess you would call them headers, uh, uh, pins that, that could stick into this breadboard connect to the picket 3 but I soldered them to my spinning LED display project so I don't have them anymore. Uh, the crystal oscillator that I'm using for this microcontroller is 20 megahertz so uh, I have this I have this thing operating at 20 megahertz. Um, every data pin, uh, there are the, the three that we're going to be using um, the three that we are going to be using are uh, master out, slave in, master in, slave out, and serial clock. Uh, those are all connected to the breadboard here. They go to their respective locations on the microcontroller, which I mentioned before. All of them are pulled to power, or uh, held high, just so they're not floating, with a 50 kilo ohm resistor. So, um, I, I also have pins 8 and 9 connected to power through a 50 kilo ohm resistor. Uh, but they're not implemented. I, I guess you could just leave them, but I would wire them the way I have here. Um, I guess uh, we should uh, go through the code now, because one very important thing to do that took me a while to figure out was the initialization sequence for SD cards. What I'm using here is just a standard 2 gigabyte SD card. Most SD cards that you'll see nowadays are going to be SDHC, SD high capacity, or uh, they have SD... Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what the other type is. I think I want to say it's an XC, but don't quote me on that. But there are many different types, and, and the SDHC and the SD... Uh, regular uh, SD cards have different initialization sequences. Uh, right now, I only have my microcontroller programmed to initialize a regular SD card. It won't make it past uh, command. I try to send command zero to uh, an SD high capacity card, and I won't receive the proper response from it because um, it has a different initialization sequence. Once I get that working, I'll post that video as well. But for now, I am just going to go over communicating with a regular SD card. Um. Uh, now, we are going to head to the assembly code. By the way, I program my microcontrollers using MPLAB. Um, I'm going to pull up the assembly code and we'll go through that. Apologize, I don't have a... Uh, I don't have... Uh, good desktop recording software, so I'm going to have to do this via camera, but I'll do my best. Uh, as usual, at the top of my assembly code, I have a bunch of uh, statements, I guess you would say, for the assembler, uh, just defining different registers on the microcontroller. Uh, I have the status register, obviously, all my different ports. Um, we're not even using half these ports for this particular tutorial. I was going to implement something else on this microcontroller that I have not got to just yet. Uh, but, but you'll see what that is when I get to it. Um, I have a couple of registers for, uh, for communicating with the SD card. The synchronous serial port status register, SSP control register, uh, SSP synchronous serial port buffer which is basically uh, the interface for us to connect to the shift registers that I was telling you about before. And then this here, and cell, don't quote me on this, I believe it's analog select, but it's the register in bank 4 that allows us to, to pick which, uh, pick which uh, input output pins we want to be analog and which ones we want to be digital. Because uh, I'm trying to receive an input from port A to start this whole thing, uh, which I'll show you later in the code. I need to be able to set port A as digital on this microcontroller. For some reason, if I don't specify port A to be digital, uh, it just uh, automatically sets port A as analog, and I was having problems with that later, so if you're having problems with that, there you go.
Um, count here is just uh, just the register I have that's going to store the number for a delay later. Uh, um, vector where I'm going to start. Setup. Uh, basically, I'm going into port 2. I'm going to port 4 now. I'm going to set port A, all digital. Um, then I'm going to go back to, to bank 2. I'm going to set port A as all output except for bit 0. I told you I was going to try to read an input through port A. Uh, that's it's going to be port A0. I believe that's pin 2 on the microcontroller. Uh, port B is all output. I uh, mentioned earlier that I have port B connected to uh, 8 LEDs just so I could see what was going on, where, where what the microcontroller was getting to, what was faulty. Um, I have port C. I have uh, one input and that's master in slave out. That is uh, seri master in serial data in, that's pin 23 on the microcontroller, and that is connecting to, uh, that is connecting to data out, pin 7 on the SD card. Um, I'm, uh, port D, I'm setting as all output that we're not using that in this tutorial. Port E, we're not using in this tutorial either. So there are a couple of registers we'll have to set up for, uh, for using uh, uh, this synchronous serial port for a serial peripheral interface. The first one is the synchronous serial port status register, SSP stat. Um, the SSP status register, the bits that we care about on this, well actually, um, I'm going to go through them one by one. There is, starting with bit 7, has to be a 1. Uh, a 1 in uh, SPI master mode means the uh, input data is sampled at the end of the data output time. Uh, clock edge select bit is uh, bit 6 and we're gonna have that set to 1 and then the rest of the bits are basically are gonna be set to 0. Bit 5 is only for IIC. Uh, bit 4 is, is also not for uh, serial peripheral interface. Uh, neither is bit 3, bit 2, uh, bit 1, bit 0 is for SPI mode. Uh, bit 0 is a uh, flag, it's a buffer full status bit. And uh, we're not going to be making use of that in this tutorial, so just set that to 0. Um, I'm going to go back to bank 0, and I'm going to handle the synchronous serial port control register. So, uh, the synchronous serial port control register, I'll go through the seven bits of that. The seventh bit is a right collision detect bit. Uh, just set that to zero. The, um, uh, the receive overflow indicator bit is bit six. Just set that to zero as well. Uh, the synchronous serial port enable bit. Um, so, we want to set that bit to one, obviously. Uh, the clock polarity select bit is going to be set to zero. Now, uh, in the synchronous serial port status register, I mentioned a clock edge select, and now I mentioned a clock polarity select bit. Between those two, uh, clock, pol uh, clock edge select and clock polarity select, there are four different modes for SPI. Um, I believe, I, I don't know what specific mode this is, what, what number it is for a mode, but we want the uh, clock edge to be uh, the data is transmitted on the rising edge, so set uh, SSP stat bit 6 to 1, and we want the clock polarity bit to be set to 0, um, so idle state for clock is a low level. Uh, the rest of the bits in this port are uh, uh, synchronous serial port mode select bits, so we're going to set this to 0010. And if you were to look at the data sheet for the PIC 16F887, 0010 is synchronous serial port master mode for the microcontroller. And the clock is going to be the, the frequency of the oscillator divided by 64. And uh, the reason why I have it divide, I have the, uh, the oscillator for the, the clock for the synchronous serial port, divided, uh, the frequency divided by 64 is because we want to initialize the microcontroller 
between 300 kilohertz and 400 kilohertz, so relatively slow compared to the 20 megahertz clock of the microcontroller. Uh, once we initialize the card, we could we could ramp up the speed and uh, uh, transmit much faster speeds. But uh, for now, and actually for the rest of this tutorial, because I never bother to to change the uh, the frequency that we're we're going to be sending the the frequency of the the synchronous serial port clock, uh, we're just going to be transmitting this slowly, and it's not a big deal. So this is where the code actually starts. Uh, this here is not not a terribly important thing. You could probably make do without this, but I'm just testing to see if bit uh, if uh, port A bit zero is high. If it's not, it'll go back to start. So the code will not begin until I connect uh, port A zero to power. This is where the initialization sequence begins. So the first thing you're going to want to do is send. Uh, I, I want to say it's 74 clock pulses to the uh, SD card. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm writing a bunch of dummy bytes to the synchronous serial port buffer. As soon as you write something to the synchronous serial port buffer, it will begin to transmit. And when it transmits, it'll send clock pulses. So all these ones mean nothing to the microcontroller. The important thing is that I'm writing to the synchronous serial port buffer, and so it will send clock pulses to the micro to the SD card. Uh, you're going to want to send 74 clock pulses. Um, and so, uh, I, I have to count one, two... I'm sending, uh, uh, I'm sending this dummy byte to the, to the SD card ten different times, so I am sending eight, uh, 80, 80 clock pulses to the microcontroller. And uh, that will be sufficient. You could go over. It, it's not terribly important. I believe the critical number is 64 and 74 is safe. Uh, just any number larger than 74, the SD card will be ready to receive commands. So you just want to send uh, roughly 80 clock pulses to the SD cards to prepare it to receive commands. The first command you're going to want to send to the microcontroller is command 0. Um, the way the commands are set up, you... Uh, uh, the command, the first byte, is going to be uh, hexadecimal 40 plus uh, the command number. So uh, 40 in 40 hexadecimal in decimal, well, 4 times 16 is 64. So we have a 1 for the 64 bit in binary, so uh, 2 to the, 2 to the, whatever, 64 here. The next bit's 128, so that's 64. Um, it's command 0, so you add 0 to that, and this is the first byte we're going to be sending. Uh, we're going to send four bytes of zeros, and then we're going to send the CRC. The CRC, or cycle redundancy check, is, is a byte that we're going to be sending that, that's, uh, that's disabled in SPI mode, but when the card wakes up, it's not in SPI mode, so we do have to send a proper cycle redundancy check value. Uh, this is just a value that's, that's sent back and forth after data to make sure that uh, that that no error in transferring bits has occurred. The binary value for command zero, uh, the hexadecimal value is 95. The binary value is 10010101, and this uh, CRC does have to be correct for command zero. Uh, for the rest of the commands we're going to send, it doesn't have to be correct, but it has to be sent. So the SD card wants to see, you, you have to send that byte, but it doesn't care what it is. So we'll just continue to send hexadecimal 95 as the CRC. So I send all these values to the synchronous serial port buffer, and I should mention uh, this delay here. You might have seen after every, every single time I send something to the synchronous serial port buffer, I call delay. And that's because it takes, uh, I, I, I oscilloscoped the... Uh, a loop of just sending uh, data to the synchronous serial port buffer and I read the serial data output line and this delay here just waits uh, just it just wastes time until the data is done being sent so I'll scroll down to delay here to show you what I'm doing there in delay I'm moving what is that 64 32 plus 8 is 40 43 Okay, um, I, uh, it's not arbitrary, I, I kept lowering the value until, 
uh, uh, well, at first I calculated it out to get a rough estimate, and then I just kept lowering the value until, until I, uh, was able to have a delay that was the right length so that I could send one byte after another with a delay in between, and it would pretty much be one right after the other. So the delay is pretty much the length of the time required for the synchronous serial port to send the data. Just so I don't try to send a piece of data while one is still being sent. That's what I have the delay for. So back up to command zero. I send all these bytes with a delay between them. So I send this byte, send this byte, all through the synchronous serial port, the CRC. And then command zero response. Now, again, you'll notice on sending a dummy byte, uh, it's not because uh, uh, the, the SD card requires, requires another piece of data, but this is because, remember how I told you before, the synchronous serial port is basically uh, two shift registers, one in the master device and one in the slave device, and each time a clock pulse is sent, they shift one bit, each from, uh, each from uh, the... Each, I believe it's the most significant bit end of the byte, but uh, don't quote me on that, and I believe it comes into the least significant bit slot. But we shift one bit from the data to, from the master to the slave and from the slave to the master. And so sending data is technically the same thing as receiving data, because as you send the clock pulses, whatever's in the SD card shift register is going to be sent to the microcontroller. And we're waiting for a specific response. The response we're waiting for is 00000001. That means uh, the SD card is now in idle mode. Uh, and uh, it's in it's in serial peripheral interface mode, and it's in idle, and we can't send commands when it's in idle. We'll have to take it out of idle, but we will worry about that after we receive the proper response. So we're going to send this data, call the delay, same same as usual. We're going to move this value to the W register, and then we're going to perform a subtraction between what is in the buffer. And if you remember, this took the data in the SD card shift register and put it into the microcontroller, and we could read it through the buffer. So we're going to perform a subtraction between that byte that we read in and the byte we're expecting. And this here is testing the status register bit 2. That's the zero flag. If that is a 1, then the result of the subtraction was 0, and the two bits were the same, two bytes were the same. So basically, uh, if if uh, status two is set, then the response was correct. Um, so we're just going to keep uh, keep this. Uh, if it fails and it's clear, it'll go back to command zero response, and we'll keep sending this dummy byte, keep reading the dummy byte, seeing if it's the proper response. And when we do get the proper response, we'll move on. This here is not to, to send or receive data of any kind. This is purely just to put some spacing between command 0 and command 55. The next command, or uh, actually set of commands that we're going to be sending, is uh, command 55 and ACMD41. These uh, app uh, commands that we're going to be sending uh, have to follow command 55 so that's the purpose of command 55 tells the SD card you're going to be receiving uh, a, a special an app command uh, next so that's the only purpose of command 55 command 55 returns the same response R1 as command 0 does so but this time when we read the response from command 55 after we send ACMD41 we want to see this be 00000000 that means it's out of idle and ready to go so command 55 it's that same hexadecimal 40 plus uh decimal 55 whatever that is in binary so the value we're going to want to send for the first byte is 01110111 uh, then the four zeros, and then the CRC, and this CRC cycle redundancy check does not have to be correct, it just has to be sent. So I just send the same CRC value as I did for command zero, and then I wait for a command 55 response in the exact same way. Um, I just uh, uh, move a dummy byte into the synchronous serial port buffer, I call delay, uh, I check and see if that equals this value, which I, I expect it to equal. Um, I perform the subtraction, and this time I do the test a little bit different because I have this piece of code down here. Uh, this I'll explain later. That comes after ACMD41. So uh, basically it's going to skip if clear. 
So if the result of this was not zero, uh, so if we receive an incorrect response, it'll move down to here and it'll test to see if the response was uh, zero, 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 zero. And before we send a CMD41, it will not be zero, 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 zero. So this bit test skip if clear will always be clear, and so it'll, before we send a CMD41, it'll go back to command 55 response. And uh, so eventually we will receive the proper response, and it will not skip, and it will skip to a CMD41 prep. Uh, that's just a value that I called it because I needed some place to jump before a CMD41. So just like I put spacing between command 0 and command 55, this is just spacing, I'm sending a dummy byte. And then here I'm sending ACMD41, the first binary value, 0110, those four bytes in between, and uh, the CRC for this one. And actually, the, the, the value I send for that is 01011111. So forget what I said earlier, there are some commands that do need a proper CRC. Like, I, uh, when, we, when we do initialize uh, an SD high-capacity card, I believe command 8 requires a proper CRC, so there are exceptions, but, but in general we won't need to use those. Now the response to ACMD41 is complicated, it's not an R1 response, I want to say it's an R3, but don't quote me on that. Um, we're going to be, basically, I, we should, I think we're going to be receiving 3 bytes as a response, and uh, one of the bytes will be... A response one and the other two will be will be some other data I'm not really sure what it is but in if I know I know this is sloppy I will professionally and properly receive the response later but for now I'm excited that we just that I got this to work so uh, basically what I'm doing here is I'm sending dummy bytes just to make sure the response is fully sent before we move on I'm not actually reading or checking the response so after ACMD41 response, I'm going to go to command 55 because uh, I need to keep sending command 55, then ACMD41, then command 55, then ACMD41 until uh, I can get this thing out of idle mode. So I'm going to send command 55 again, and I don't know how many times it's going to take to get out of, uh, to get out of um, uh, idle mode. But, but when it does, going back and forth between ACMD41 and uh, CMD55, the idle bit, the, idle, uh, the, uh, the R1 response, the bit for idle will be cleared. So that's what this is down here. So uh, basically one time when it gets to command 55, uh, w even, if, even once the response was received, this will not be set, it will be clear, because it will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And so it'll test that, and uh, if it is set, it'll go to initialize done, init done. And that's down below here. And at this point, we have properly initialized the SD card, and we're ready to start uh, reading and writing data from the SD card. Now, um, one word of warning. Uh, once you write to the SD card with your microcontroller, uh, you're most likely going to write over, if you just write to sector 0, you're going to write over uh, file allocation table data, and your computer will no longer be able to recognize your SD card. Now, uh, you can always reformat your SD card, and the, the, your will, computer will be able to read it then, but uh, after you do this, we'll need a special piece of software uh, called HXD, which I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, so that we can actually read the data that we're writing. So, once initialization is done, I just send this value to port B just as an indicator, so I can see two LEDs at the end light up, so I know that it initialized properly. Now, uh, right here we're just setting block length. Uh, for read and write commands, uh, we need to know how many bytes we're going to be reading and writing, and we're going to be reading and writing 512 bytes. So that's what we're setting our block length to. We're only writing in this tutorial, but reading is done in much the same way, and I will do in future tutorial posts. So the set block length command is this binary value, 0101000. I send, uh, now in between, instead of sending all zeros, I am going to send the block length as the argument. So 500, and uh, if you imagine these as four consecutive bytes, this one's most significant byte, this one's least significant byte, uh, this bit here is worth 128, this one's 256, this is 
5, uh, 5, 5, 12. And so we want to set the block length to 512 bytes, so we set that value to 1. And if you notice, I'm sending 1001001101, the command 0 uh, CRC. Uh, I'm waiting for uh, block length will respond with a R1 response, and since it is initialized and not an idle, I should receive 0000000000. So I'm just testing response the same way I tested all my other other responses to all my other commands um, with the status two register, seeing if the value in the the buffer equals this. Um, I'm sending another different two bytes to my uh, uh, LEDs just to make sure it made it past this properly, and then I'm going to actually write to the microcontroller. Now, uh, before we write to the microcontroller, we have to send the command saying that we are going to write a block. And so, uh, the command here, the first byte is 0101, 1000. I'm going to send this, the argument I'm going to send these next four consecutive bytes are going to be the address of the byte that I'm going, of the, uh, the byte that I'm going to start sending data at. Now, one thing you have to be careful of is that you don't start writing in one sector and finish writing in the next sector. That will respond, uh, there will be an error if you try to do that and that will not work. So since we uh, set our block length to 512 bytes, which is one sector, we have to start at uh, 0, 512, 1024, at, uh, inter at, uh, at, at even, even, evenly spaced intervals of 512 bytes. So we're going to be writing to the first sector, so the, the argument's going to be all zeros. Um, and the CRC, as you can see, it's the same as command 1. Uh, we are expecting a response 1 from this, the same response from block length, and I send another 2 bytes to port B just to make sure that I read port B, prop uh, just to make sure that, that the code made it to this point properly. Now, after we send that command, we need to send a data, a data, uh, um, I guess you'd call it a data token. So that uh, the the thing the uh, SD card will will start receiving. Uh, we need to send this before we can start sending the actual data. Once it receives this, every consecutive byte that will be sent uh, within the block length will be uh, accepted as data. So this is to tell the SD card, hey, I'm going to be sending data next. So the the byte you're going to have to send is one 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 zero, and after that you can start sending data. So. Um, now, I'm going to go through the actual uh, code for, for the data we're going to be sending. Okay, so I need to send 512 pieces of data, 512 bytes of data. So I need to make a loop to go around 512 times. So the way I approach this is I'm going to loop four times through a loop of 129 and I'm using 129 instead of 128 for this reason when I made this this double decrementing loop uh, I basically what this loop does is after it loads uh, value 8 and value 129 into the, these respective registers it will decrement the register with 129 see if that see if its new value is 0 if it is it will skip down if it's not it'll send data um, now when you go, uh, when you, there are 129 decrements that you can do before you get the value 129 to 0, but the last one will equal 0 and will skip down and not send data. And so, uh, I have to, to load 129 instead of 128 into this uh, location so that I send the data 128 times. Now, after those 128 times on the 129th decrement, it will reload the um, it will reload that register, and it will decrement uh, this value here, which is four. Now, I set that to four and not to five because the fourth decrement does make it equal zero, but the data is already sent before it tests to see if it equals zero. So this is a loop here. It loops around. Uh, 512 times each time through the loop it'll go to this send data here so it'll jump the code will jump to send data and it will move a data a uh, piece of data into the buffer uh, the synchronous serial port buffer and it will send the data now right here uh, I believe this is uh, I want to say it's hexadecimal value C2 uh, 
I'm mostly sure of that, uh, just by memory, because, uh, nope, nope, no, it's not, never mind. Uh, forget that. Anyway, I'm sending this byte here. Actually, why don't we figure this out? This is 128, uh, this is 32. Well, basically, we could say it's 255 minus 64. Uh, so 255 minus 64 minus 2 minus 1, so minus 3. So 255 minus 67 is... Ah, I'm sorry, it's, uh, it's too late for me. Anyway, we're sending that byte to the synchronous serial port buffer, and the SD card, which received the data token previously, will receive that, accept it as data, and, and store it. Okay, so that is 188 in decimal. Uh, uh, I'm not going to convert that to hexadecimal right now. Um, it'll call delay and then go to uh, decrement uh, and send, and that's that's just what I named the loop. So basically, this is a loop. It'll go through 200 and uh, 512 times, and uh, each time through, it'll send this piece of data to uh, the next location, starting at uh, starting at the location we specified, and each time to the next location in the SD card. Um, once we finish with the loop all 512 times, we're going to jump to rote, and uh, I will receive a response from the SD card once I finish send once I finish sending all the data. But I uh, have not uh, bothered to read that response because uh, this this code works properly and it's the end of the code anyway. I, I honestly at this point I will implement it. But at this point, I don't care what the code is. Uh, I don't care what the response is because the code works. And so I basically just send uh, dummy bytes just to cycle through some clock pulses to get the response uh, cycled through. And then I end the code. I uh, just send these this byte to port B so I can see the LEDs. And then I just go into an infinite loop here. Um, that's pretty much it for for initializing the SD card and the code, though to uh, uh, show you that this works here, I'm going to uh, write a piece of code, it'll predict what will be stored on the SD card, and then I will show you, I will store it on the SD card. So I want a register that I can store data in and, and uh, change the value and store a different piece of data. So I am going to name a register data in or that that actually won't work as a uh, uh, serial data, and that will be at location. I'm using twenty uh, hexadecimal twenty one twenty two twenty three hexadecimal. Uh, I'm gonna move a value to data, so I'll do that here in setup. I'm gonna set. I'm gonna move uh, zero binary hexadecimal decimal zero zero to data. I'm sorry, you can't see what I'm doing right now. I'll scroll down. I'm moving binary value 0 to data. Serial data. And what I'm going to do is I am going to um, each time through the loop I am going to increment serial data. This is where it'll send. This is the data that it's going to send, and I'm going to move serial data to W. Uh, there's one problem I'm going to run into here. The first data piece that it's going to send is binary 0000001, and I want it to send 0 first. So I'm actually going to set serial data instead of to 0, I'm going to set it to all 1s. So when it increments, it'll overflow, uh, but it will set back to 0. And so um, this, there are 256 different values that will be sent. Each one is one 
higher than the previous, and when it gets to uh, uh, hexadecimal FF, it'll jump back down to hexadecimal 00 and start incrementing all the way back up to hexadecimal FF, and it'll store that in sector 0 of the, micro, of the SD card. So now I'm going to uh, build this project, project build all, no errors, alright, that's what I was looking for. And I am going to program the microcontroller. I'm going to need to move this. Because I have my computer mounted on a shelf. I can't reach it from where I am. I'm going to have to hurry this up. My camera's almost out of battery. So I'm not going to go through programming microcontrollers in this tutorial. That's uh, kind of out of the scope. And, and frankly, I'm, I shouldn't have clicked OK there. I'm running out of time uh, before my camera dies. So I'm, I, I will mention how I hook these up. The, the first pin's going to uh, MCLR. The second one is going to power for the microcontroller third one is connected to ground of the microcontroller. Uh, the fourth one is going to uh, synchronous serial port. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if the fourth one is synchronous serial port clock or synchronous serial port data. I know there's both. Okay, the fourth one is synchronous serial port. Uh, I'm sorry. It's getting late. Not synchronous serial port. Um, In-circuit serial programming, ICSP data. Uh, I've been thinking too much in SD card lately. Uh, the next one is ICSP, in circuit serial programming clock. Now, I can't program with these two LEDs in here, the ones on the end, because those are pins ICSP data and ICSP clock. And it doesn't, it won't recognize the microcontroller when I have those LEDs connected to ground. So I'm going to program this. Programmer program. Verify complete. And now it is programmed. If you notice, the SD card is not plugged into the socket um, when I was programming, because I programmed this microcontroller at 5 volts. So I'm going to plug the LEDs back in, disconnect the programmer, and we are going to head over to my power supply with the SD card wherever I left it. All right. Now, uh, I am going to connect power to this. Uh, I'm going to plug in the SD card, and then I'm going to touch those two wires together. At the beginning of the code, if you remember, it waited for an input on port A, bit 0. And because I don't have a switch, I haven't made any trips to Radio Shack lately, I just have to touch those two wires together. Uh, to reduce noise, uh, port A0 is connected to ground through a 1K resistor. Uh, that way it doesn't, uh, float doesn't think it's high, uh, I can just pull it high when I need to and otherwise it'll be low. So, I need to find my SD card. Here we go. This, uh, circuit board that I have, the, uh, SD card socket I bought from Digikey, it's a Molex, I believe is the brand. The printed circuit board is one I made uh, using my ultraviolet exposure box. That's in a different tutorial if, if that interests you. Um, if you'll notice, I have my power supply set to 3.3 volts. I have the SD card plugged in, and I am going to connect power. Should probably apologize, this video is ridiculously long. But I wanted to get through all of the initialization and, and showing that it worked in the first tutorial. The uh, subsequent tutorials will be shorter because they'll be on specific pieces from this. Um, right now, port B is reading something. It's just because I didn't clear it before, before I got to that infinite loop at start, before I uh, uh, send data to port A. Okay, what is up guys? Uh, it's Matthew Burns. It's been about half an hour since I uh, recorded the last four segments, I believe. I've done this in pieces. Um, and the reason why I stopped the video was because the SD card did not write. 
uh, I didn't see the indicator LED lights turn on properly, and it just wasn't making it through the code. And, uh, you know, for the life of me, I was looking and looking and looking through the code. I uh, was playing with interrupts beforehand, so I made sure I cleared the global interrupt enable bit. I, uh, I checked a bunch of different things. I re-went re through all the code byte for byte, bit for bit, and I couldn't find anything. Uh, I'm almost too embarrassed to admit this, but the whole time, the chip select was going through a 50k resistor to power, and uh, I didn't have it pulled to ground. You could skip that resistor, I guess you could just pull it to ground, but I did not have chip select pulled to ground. Sure enough, I, I connect chip select to ground because chip select is an active low. Uh, the purpose of it is so you can have multiple slave devices connected to one master uh, SPI device. And uh, you can select which device you want to talk to by pulling chip select low before you send the data through the three other pins. Well, I used to have chip select controlled to the mic connected to the microcontroller, but then I realized it wasn't even worth it because I'm only talking to one SD card. Why do I need? Uh, why do I even need to use chip select? Well, I had removed the wire that was uh, pulling chip select to ground, and so that was my issue. Uh, half an hour later, a lot of searching later, a uh, stupid solution, a simple solution, at least it wasn't a big problem. Uh, now I can show you that it is working. Right now I have ground connected, I don't have power connected to the board. Now I do have power connected, well not yet actually, this is the wire here for power. You can see the SD card is connected, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. The SD card is connected. None of the LEDs light up yet, but remember we're testing port A0 before any of this initialization sequence begins. And once I touch these two wires together, the initialization sequence will begin. And you'll see the last two LEDs that we say to turn on at the very end. We, we move that binary value into port B, we send it to port B. And that means the card went through the entire sequence, the initialization sequence, uh, setting block length, writing, sending data. And if we take out that card and view it on the, the uh, software HXD that I told you about before, we will be able to see that the card wrote, the data wrote to the card in the manner that we, we wanted. Oh, give me a second. I shouldn't have done that. Oh boy. Okay, even if there was a mistake there, I just wrote to the card again. Just ran through the same sequence. I'm gonna remove power. Then I'm gonna turn off the power supply. I'm gonna remove the card and we will head back over to the computer. Okay, I'm going to plug in the SD card. Chances are your computer will not read the SD card after you wrote to it with the microcontroller. Because we're not using any file system. We are just reading and writing raw data. But, uh, you can reformat it if you really wanted to. So it's not that big of a deal. So again, I'm going to open up the software, HXD, on the right. Now, you won't be able to uh, read the SD card unless you right-click, run as administrator. Yes. And then the window pops up. So, I'm trying to control the camera and the computer at the same time. Needless to say, it's a little bit difficult. But you're going to want to go to the upper right-hand corner. You see that symbol, click it, open disk, a window pops up. We're going to want to open the last one, removable disk 2, under physical disks. Sorry, my split between my two monitors is right there. Removable disk 2, and if you look, alright, i got to get this chair out of here so I can actually record. Data wrote 
to sector 0. Now, some of the other sectors are written to because I was playing around with writing to the sectors, like sector 1, I have hexadecimal FF binary 1111111. But sector 0 is what we're interested in because we wrote 512 bytes, one block, that's one sector, and we wrote it to sector 0. If you'll notice, it wrote in exactly the manner we expected, starting at the top left, the uh, the first byte is has a value of 0, the second byte, hexadecimal 1, next byte 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then it jumps to 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, and it goes all the way to F, F. And then, if you remember, I said, because that's 256 different values, uh, with a max value of 255, wait, with a max value, uh, yeah, that should be right, 255, um, uh, but 256 different numbers, and there are 512, uh, 512 bytes that we're writing in this block, in this sector, um, once you increment, we called it S data in the code, it will overflow and go from 1111111 to binary 0000000000. 000 000 000 000 000 000 000. So if you move across, you'll notice it starts from 0 again, goes all the way back up to FF, and that is the end of the sector. There begins sector 1. So we were able to successfully write to the SD card, and that is very exciting because with this, uh, you can pretty much do whatever you want. What I plan to do with it is I plan to make a data logger. I'm going to use a real-time clock, uh, which I don't have, so I'm just going to use a 32.768 kilohertz uh, crystal oscillator, and I'm going to use timer 1 uh, and deal with interrupts on this microcontroller to, uh, to, to basically in software make a real-time clock. Um, I'm going to use this to log data at, at even increments of whatever time value I, I decide and timestamp the data, send the data to the SD card, and I'm working on a piece of code in Python so I could, I could read the raw data in and have it display meaningful data to us. Um, thanks for watching. I'll post more interesting, less boring, long, rambling tutorials later on uh, initializing SD high capacity cards, uh, reading data, uh, and all sorts of other cool things like that. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this very long tutorial on how to interface with SD cards using a microcontroller through the serial peripheral interface protocol.